Hello, say Charata. Anxiety. Anxiety is a major problem today. And there are different specific types of anxiety, such as the fear of repentance. When you do something that you don't enjoy, that you don't like, because you just don't want to be regretting not having done. For example, let's say that your friends want to add you to a group in the newest social media. If you accept, you know what's gonna happen. You will spend a lot of time reading all the notifications, all the messages from everybody. The benefit you get from that is at least you have a clear conscience that you're not missing out on anything. But you can also choose not to join the group and not read everything that they've been up to. In that case, the sense of anxiety about losing something important may arise, and this is called FOMO, the fear of missing out. I'll give you also an example from the offline world as well. You can meet your friends even though you are very tired. You would prefer actually to stay home and devote some precious and valuable time to some type of a project that could be important to you. But in this case, you are motivated by the fear of regret of not having gone. Because after all, you know that there are all these moments when your friends are up to something and then later they're posting photos on social media and telling you oh, it was such a great day, you just missed it. Anxiety removes happiness from the present moment. The irony with all these moments is that sometimes you may decide to actually go and then you are interacting with everybody and another kind of repentance may arise. The regret that you didn't stay at home. So this is a kind of anxiety that drives us away from happiness because it seems like where we are right now, where we stand, is never good enough. It, it's like we always want to be somewhere else, doing something else with other people. This is living life according to fear. Fear of making the wrong choice. If you just try to slow down and pay more attention to the value of the present moment, you may realize that, you see, every activity, every goal that is future-oriented, it will always be opening new doors. It's never-ending. The person who doesn't know how to enjoy the present moment will always be doing this. They will always be chasing after something out of reach. If you find this sweet spot, this point of balance between respect and appreciation of the past, contentment and appreciation of the present moment, and also do some planning of the future moment. That's where you want to be. And you can find out what is triggering your anxiety. And this is the idea behind the strengthening of emotional intelligence. This is a process of self-knowledge that allows you to understand what your routine choices are, what are your habits, and most importantly, how you can improve these routine choices, these habits, to have a better future. I even made a special video about this, about how these routines and habits, they work. Because you can improve these habits. You just need to understand what are the triggers that are causing you to start the particular activity that you want to modify. And having that very clear, you can also understand what is the type of reward that usually you're looking for, and what can you do about it to substitute. This is the triangle of habit. I will put the link here so you can watch the video. There's also a free ebook that you can download. And just to give an example, just to illustrate, imagine you are away from home and you don't have the charger of your smartphone. And you take a look and you see there's just a little bit of uh, battery life. Your battery is gonna die. And at that moment that you realize that you just can't use your phone for too long, somebody is calling you. And you're like looking, who is that? Maybe it's somebody from your family, some very close friend. And you're like, oh my God, like this person is calling me and they're going to be talking to me and my battery is going to die and you know I can't use my phone later. So when you pick up the phone, even though you don't really want, you are a little bit rude. You're in a rush and say, hey, uh, yeah, I can't talk right now because my battery is going to die. Bye. And, and then you're like, whoa, oh, my God, that was a little bit rude um, because you just didn't want um, this situation happening. You wanted to prevent the battery from dying completely. 
So what can you do here? With this attitude, you can realize that um, you are not very happy with the, the, the type, the quality of the interaction you just had. It was not very civilized. It was not very nice or so polite, at least. And that is um, just one example showing a situation in which we just can't enjoy the present moment because we have this anxiety about a future moment. So what can we do here? Well, you see, if you realize that the battery is low, that would be the trigger causing you to be in a certain emotional state. And this is triggering a certain reaction, the, the, the style of communication you have with other people. And in this situation, you can either accept reality or you should do something to change reality. Continue with this example of the low battery. What can you do to deal with this anxiety? You can accept the reality that you have very little battery and you're not going to be able later to make new calls until you charge that phone. And you accept the fact that perhaps this situation in the present moment, this conversation, will not go until the very last moment. Because if you, know, you just run out of battery, the connection may fall right in the middle. And you accept that. It's okay. It's cool. You are also accepting the fact that this is, not a, like, it is not the end of the world. You can always call that person later. That person can always call you later, right? So when you accept the fact, this acceptance of reality, that um, you will run out of battery life, uh, you will need to wait a little bit until you find the next power source, this is all acceptance of the reality. This will bring you a lot of tranquility, a sense of calm. However, if it's a very big deal that if your battery life will um, you know, cause you problems, professional problems or otherwise, and that you always need to be connected, maybe you are expecting an important telephone call, maybe there is an urgency. So what can you do? You can use your very good emotional intelligence to understand that you always have to have a good plan, that you always need to have a way to be charging your phone. For example, you can carry a portable charger. You can do a better planning, of course. And then you accept this fact, that it is possible to find new solutions. And there's, of course, going to be a cost for that. You have to be paying more attention. You have to perhaps be carrying that extra battery that may be a little bit heavy, or may even have a financial cost and you may need extra cables and chargers uh, to put in different places. But you understand that this is the price to pay to avoid that type of situation that you do not want to see happening. So you can change your focus. Anxiety happens when the focus is directed at what we don't have yet or the frustration of being dissatisfied with what we have right now. So what we can do, we can use our rational mind to redirect our thoughts and our focus to the aspects that ultimately will bring joy and happiness in our lives. Just imagine the situation where you decide to go out to socialize with your friends um, and somehow you feel that, you know, that, that that's not a very good idea. You're not really enjoying yourself. You start to get a little bit anxious, wondering, you know, maybe it would be better if I, you know, well, if I could stay at home. <laughs> uh, what can you do here? How can you change your focus in this situation? Is it really that you cannot do anything about it? That you just have to be miserable over there? I don't know. But I guess maybe you can put a little bit of effort to change a little bit the course of that interaction, that conversation, what everybody's talking about. And... Maybe you will discover other aspects of your friends that you know you never actually had the opportunity to be talking about that can even make your relationship more interesting with them. Just imagine the opposite right now. Imagine that you're preparing to take a trip together with your friends, but it happened that you ended up getting very sick and you had to you know, cancel all the plans and you have to stay at home, you have to be resting. One way to look at this situation is to be miserable. 
say, oh, I'm such a you know, unluckiest person in the world. I'm so unhappy right now because there, the, there was this unique opportunity for me to finally be happy with my friends. It was this going to be this incredible trip, but now I have to stay at home. And then you feel horrible, of course. Another way to dedicate your focus is by thinking, what can you do alone to have fun? Maybe you can get a good book. Maybe you can find interesting activities that you can do uh, and start learning how to enjoy yourself. Do you know yourself well? What is ideal? What is healthy for you? How long, in theory, do you think it is acceptable to stay out of these social networks? How many offline hours do you need to you know, feel irritated or anxious because you're like not online? And to a certain degree, it is quite normal for everybody to feel a little bit insecure and anxious because we are not connected, we don't know what's happening, so, you know, there is a little bit of the FOMO happening. Um, and it's, you know, normal. But the problem is when all of this starts to become a little bit pathological and causing serious problems. When the choice is based on FOMO, there is a greater tendency to have a crisis later. You may feel a grudge, some sort of resentment, and that could hurt your relationship with people. The inability to say no also makes you waste your time and spend money doing things that, you know, is not aligned with what you really want to be doing. So one way to deal with all of this is to master your feelings and to strengthen your emotional intelligence. And if you are interested in that, I want to put a link here so you can see a little bit more. We have a course in emotional intelligence, assertiveness, good communication, knowing how to say no. And I see you there.